I had tried creating motion graphics with AI before, but Nano Banana helped finally crack the code. I was able to make this custom lower third name card animation. That was the easiest, but I also figured out a bunch of different styles that would apply for different use cases or niches, like for explainer videos, data visualizations, the parallax documentary style, educational diagrams, and even this pretty complex map animation, which used to take days of highly specialized work. The ending was a little silly, I threw that in just for fun, but the first half of that, all the map animations, are something that is used in videos all the time and takes a skilled animator or team of animators to make the traditional way. And I made that in under an hour, and that was just messing around and figuring out the process. I could do it faster now. And all of these examples are a combination of Nano Banana mixed with other AI video tools. And that final map one took the most steps, so I'll save it for the end, but a pretty easy one to start with is this data visualization. But for this example, I found an existing chart about AI adoption across industries. That was for example's sake, but you could definitely use your own data and prompt for something from scratch. Or you could give it a really rough sketch of what you want and use that instead. But I brought that into Gemini to edit with Nano Banana, and I'm using this in the Google Gemini app. From there, I added a prompt, transformed this bar chart into a futuristic data visualization, and some other stuff here. Then it came back with this, which looked great on the first try. Not perfect though. I needed to clean it up and then also remove all the bars. There was just a couple back and forths, but this one was pretty straightforward. I did run into some harder issues to solve in some of the other examples, so I'll show how I fixed each of those later. Now, if you're using Nano Banana in Gemini or Google AI Studio, which is a completely free place to use it, it will have a watermark. Tools that have incorporated it using the API, like FreePick, those won't have a watermark. But the little watermark is pretty small, so it's easy to remove if you want to, like a quick selection in Generative Fill does the trick. I'll mention right off the bat, another tool that's very nice to have is an upscaler. So I used Magnific for mine, which is on the expensive side, but I upscaled some of these before animating. I forgot on some too. But using some sort of method for upscaling these images is very helpful. But now that I have these two images for animating between them, you need to use a platform that has the option for start and end frames. The three I tested most of these in was Hyluo, Kling, and Midjourney. Hyluo one in almost every case, then Kling one a couple. But all I need to do is drag in the start frame, then also upload the ending frame, then just type a quick prompt. I could keep this pretty simple because there's already so much information in the images. It knows what it needs to do, then just generate that. And then this was the result. So it's pretty easy, and if that prompt looked long for getting the style, I also tried it with a much simpler prompt of just make this graph look cooler and more futuristic, and that might have looked even better. So I did do the same steps with that one too. Here's how it turned out. Now using basically that same technique, but in a completely different style was that Rhino example. This could be in some sort of like educational video where you're talking about what the smaller horn is for. And this example was from an old prompt I saved from Umesh AI on Twitter. I wanted to see if I could turn that into a video. I actually first was going through this with a person running and then it would zoom in on their ankle as if they were getting like an injury or something. Yeah, I didn't think that went through and ran into some content moderation issues. I probably should have seen that coming. So I switched over to the Rhino and I didn't like the style that came back at first. So I actually used the original image from Umesh as a style reference and asked for that viewed from the side. Then I needed to zoom in and change the camera angle and also highlight the horn red. I actually ran into issues a couple of times. It kept highlighting both of the horns. A lot of times when it gets something like that wrong, it will just get stuck and say it made the changes, but it will just keep giving you back the exact same image. That's annoying, but I've found that the best thing to do when that happens is to just start a new chat. Then you can try again with fresh context. And a quick tip here, if you don't know, 
instead of downloading an image to be able to prompt with it again, you can just copy it. And whether you're in the same chat or a new chat, then you can just paste it in. That saves a lot of time and avoids some of the clutter that can build up in your downloads folder. But in this next chat, it worked great, followed all my edits. It ended up like this, which was almost perfect. I did want it zoomed in a little closer, so I just cropped it down myself. And I did end up running both of these through the creative upscaler in Magnific. Then from there, it was a really easy prompt in Hilo. Ran it a few times just in case, but it turned out great. Um, this is the final result. So this technique could be really helpful in educational content. You could use a unique style throughout the whole video anytime you need to illustrate a concept. A lot of people are using these new AI tools to boost their social media presence. Another great way to do that is by using this free resource provided by HubSpot. It's called HubSpot's AI Powered Viral Toolkit. This includes a few really powerful things to help level up your social media. One of those is the Go Viral GPT. It's trained on 2025's most successful viral campaigns. You can give it information about yourself or your business and it will give personalized viral strategies. It's like your viral marketing partner. The other really valuable part of this toolkit is their prompts and hooks resource. They have a full list of 15 expertly crafted copy paste prompts you can customize for your needs for everything from content ideas to reverse engineering viral content to generating complete viral scripts. Then there's also one of my personal favorite parts, a database of over 50 attention grabbing hooks categorized by their emotional trigger. I have my own personal database like this that I've been developing over years and they're just giving this away. So this is an amazing toolkit for social Social media success. Download that for free using the link in the description. So thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video and providing valuable resources like this one. Next, I've got an example that's a little more relevant to the type of content I make. I do a lot of explainer videos covering various topics in AI, and then adding motion graphics on the screen is very helpful. I do have an editor now that's helped for a few of my recent videos, but I did every edit myself for the previous two years before that, and it takes a lot of time to make even simple animations sometimes. So this technique could save me a ton of time. So I went with a very simplified version of how an AI model gets trained. This was just to prove the concept before testing it with something more complex. And for this, I actually just use a text prompt with no reference image or anything. That uses Google's Imagine 4 image generator, which is solid and has great prompt adherence. This is a longer prompt just to cover everything that was needed. You know, not super complex, but this type of thing wouldn't have been possible at all a year ago. And it got it right on the first try and it nailed the style I was going for. Like this was perfect. But then I needed to remove the icons and get just the background, which it failed at first. But luckily it didn't get stuck this time and actually got it right on the second try. Then as you can probably guess, I took that into Hilo to use as a start and end frame. Just prompted for the icons to appear in a dynamic way. That worked out well. But then I needed the animation to show the data moving through the training to the AI model. So I explained what I wanted with an arrow, the gear turning, then the AI model glowing. It took quite a few tries to get that right. And it actually never got it exactly perfect how I wanted it. It should have started from underneath the data here, but that was an easy fix in Premiere with a mask. I think that one turned out amazing. I could absolutely use that in one of my videos. Even with the little bit of trial and error, that was super fast. It would have taken me a really long time to create even a pretty simple animation like that manually. Now for the lower thirds title card, this one was really easy. I did four different versions of it and they all looked great. I did a more standard version, one more techie with glossy gradients, a futuristic neon version. You can do all sorts of styles from simple to complex. And I actually got this base prompt from ChatGPT. Then all I needed to do was just replace the style section for each. They each came back solid on either the first or second try. And depending on the style, it might make more sense to do either a green screen or a black background so it's easier to remove later. And for this one, I only needed them as the end frame. I also had ChatGPT generate the prompts for each of these, so they're a little long. You definitely go with a simple prompt too and it should work just fine. But really, that was it. And from there, it was just into Premiere to key out the green screen or to add a blend mode depending on the background. I did one other one I want to show before I get into the map animations. I wanted to see if I could recreate the like parallax effect they use in a lot of faceless documentary channels on YouTube. It's where there's like multiple layers that all come together to create a scene. This is the one I was most surprised by. I thought it was going to fail for sure with the parallax thing. But I decided to try it with a scene of Alan Turing, the type of thing that could pop up in a documentary when talking about his early life. I got a shot of him in this setting with a chalkboard in the background and a desk in front of him. 
And this was just text to image again. I didn't even upload an image reference of him and it ended up looking really similar. But from there, I just asked for each of the layers separately. So starting with the background, then I needed just him. That didn't work on the first try, but worked on the second. And then I needed just the desk. Then when I uploaded all three of those and asked Nano Banana to composite it, it did not work out how I wanted it to. So I ended up taking it into Photoshop and putting them where I needed it. And then I used generative fill to get his body here. So I used those as the start and end frames to have each piece slide into their place. And Hilo was definitely a fail on this one. I gave it a few tries. So then I brought it into Kling and as I was waiting for that to generate, I wasn't expecting it to work. So I had actually started making one that had these annotation boxes. I was gonna bring that into VO3 and explain what I wanted it to do. That's a technique that's worked really well in there, but it ended up working out great in Kling. So I ended up not needing to go that other route. And that was already a decent proof of concept, but I wanted to take it further and test switching out the background. So back in Nano Banana, I asked it to switch the background out for like a 1940s code breaking office scene. Then I took that back into Photoshop with those same layers from before with him in the desk. And I just moved them slightly so there would be some added parallax effect. And Hilo failed again, so it was back to Kling to get the background to switch out, and that looked great. Then for the finishing touch, it needed some overlays, which are almost always used in this style. So I actually generated an ember overlay in Hilo. The film grain and dust and scratches one didn't work as well. So I just got a stock one from Storyblocks instead. Then in Premiere, it was just the standard way to overlay these. Just using a screen blend and then lowering the opacity to like 15 to 20%. This isn't meant to be an editing tutorial, but I just want to make sure I cover everything. Like in CapCut, they have just drag and drop effects like this too. I also did bring just the images in. So there'd be a longer pause between the switch and also at the end. And this is how the whole thing turned out. Turing's solitary work soon grew into a team effort at Bletchley Park, where hundreds fought to break Enigma. I think that turned out really well. It would be hard to do this with more layers and to have control through longer scenes. Like you could definitely run into issues and get stuck, but also maybe not. Now onto the final project, maps. I actually did two of these, so I'll show the simpler one first. This was using the famous Delicate Arch in Arches National Park. But for this, I just found a little map of the trail to Delicate Arch. Then I prompted for it in a new, more interesting style. This is kind of a longer prompt, but the most important part was probably this restyle everything as aged parchment with subtle 3D relief. Honestly, I probably could have just used that, but the restyling looked awesome. Um, after that, it didn't work out with what I was asking to lower the camera and then to add the arch and everything. So I ended up taking it into a new chat. I asked for it to zoom out to sitting on a table. Then I tried putting a little red circle where I wanted the arch to be. I've had that work in other situations. It did not work for this one. Placed it just like right in the middle. I tried it a few other times and it just didn't work prompting it that way. What ended up working was just explaining that I wanted it near the upper right hand corner of the paper. That turned out perfect. Then from there I just needed to zoom and change the perspective. Ended up great. Then Hiloa was the winner again for the animations. It had a bunch of interesting ways it popped up. But I particularly liked this sand reveal one since the arch is made of sandstone. I haven't mentioned it yet, but the sound design is always a big factor in video. It really helps pull everything together and make it more immersive. So I used stock sound effects for all of these. You can generate sound effects too in a couple platforms. Eleven Labs has gotten pretty good with that. But for stock, I personally have a subscription to Storyblocks. But there's also free sites like Pixabay and Pexels too. This one only needed a few sound effects. The next one needed way more. But here is the result again. So that end result turned out pretty cool and could be an actually useful animation. You could even probably take this further with like a Game of Thrones intro style animation. That could be pretty cool. The France and Eiffel Tower animation was a longer process than that for sure, but it wasn't too bad, especially when you consider how hard this is to do in other ways. So I actually uploaded the video in Google AI Studio and had Gemini watch it and guess how long it took to make. The first response estimated it at several days to a few weeks, depending on the complexity of the initial assets. So I asked it, how about if you were using all pre-made assets? And it still said, achieving the level of polish and precise timing seen in the video would likely take a skilled animator a few days, like three to five days of dedicated work. That's why this is so crazy to be able to do this and actually have some amount of control like I did in this one. Like it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And I could make it better now after ironing out the kinks if I tried it again. But how this worked, I got just a satellite image of France like this, just the basic Google Maps one. And I also zoomed out to get one of the whole world. Then I asked for it to highlight France in red and also get rid of the other text. Then I needed a label for France. Now, when I wanted it to make it in a different style, kind of more like this image, it 
did not work at all. It didn't know where France was anymore. I kept trying and just couldn't get it to work. This was not the first chat I did this in. I was actually surprised at how bad it was at highlighting France. I thought it would have more map data and be able to figure it out better than this. Even this one had France labeled on it and it still turned out like this. So that's why I ended up using this one where France was pretty well highlighted and also why I ended up going with this exact style. Um, then I had that image and needed to change the camera angle and to add an outline to it. Then I needed it to tone down the glow a little bit. Worked great. The part that did not work out was adding the Eiffel Tower to it. It kept putting it in the wrong place. Um, I couldn't get it in the right spot, so I ended up just fixing that in Photoshop. It's supposed to be closer to the top of France. That only takes me a couple minutes, so it's better than going back and forth like this. So that was everything I needed for the first start and end frame. But then I was zooming all the way to a real view of the Eiffel Tower. So I needed an image of that. This ended up working out really easily. So when you just hover over the Eiffel Tower on Google Maps, it has this nice animation here. So I ended up just taking a couple screenshots from that. Most of the time it won't work out that easily. My original plan was to use Google Earth Studio. Now, if you've never used Google Earth Studio, you can move all around the entire Earth. You can zoom in and out on any location. You can also just type for where you're trying to go. But from there, you can move the camera around in 3D space and get any perspective you want. So that's what I'd normally have used to get the framing. So you could use those as is or take them in here to Gemini, ask for an image viewed from that vantage point, And then I said, make it look realistic, not like it was taken on Google Maps. And that looked amazing. I actually wish I had done this instead of the version I went with. And you could do this in all sorts of different styles. You could make a Sims style if you wanted or a Minecraft version or Grand Theft Auto. And back to Google Earth Studio, you can even do animations right within it where you zoom all the way in from space to a location or from location to location or even fully custom where you can control every keyframe and perspective. It is super fun. Fun. I've used it in some previous videos. But anyways, I ended up just using two frames from that original animation I showed on Google Maps. Then the highlighting and notes were done using a prompt that I saw from Bilawal on Twitter. You are a location-based AR experience generator. Highlight the point of interest in this image and annotate relevant information about it. That prompt is actually what inspired me to figure out this whole animation process. So using that exact prompt, it gave me a great image. It was perfectly highlighted and had the information about it. And from there, all that was left was the same process again using start and end frames in Hilo. So for the starting shot, same thing for the next shot, zooming in. Then same thing for the glow and information popping up. Can't remember which of these was the exact one I used. I got quite a few different versions. The prompts were pretty simple on all of those, and I was pretty stoked on how these turned out. Then I just decided to add that final little zoom into me sitting at a cafe with the Eiffel Tower in the background. For that, I just uploaded an image of my face and asked for me sipping an espresso at a French cafe with a view of the Eiffel Tower. Then I switched that so the espresso and a croissant were on the table, then gave myself a beret. Then same process of start and end frames there too. Now after that was of course the sound design. That's always its own project. There's definitely more involved on this one, but that really seals the deal. It is super important to spend some time on the sound design. So that was the full process on that. I'm still shocked I was able to get there on that one. I'll play it one more time here. <laughs> The ending was a little silly. I threw that in just for fun. This, I plan to do a lot more experimentation. I tried to show all of the fails and the workarounds. I don't wanna make it seem easier than it is. So this doesn't completely replace any of the original tools, but it does make things significantly easier. And that back and forth and the trial and error, I'm doing that instead of the hundreds of hours it would take to learn After Effects. And this of course doesn't replace complex motion graphics work, but it can do basic motion graphics and more. So for me or most YouTubers who have to learn, you know, 20 different skills to start a channel and try to hone them over years, just learning as you go, this can be a great way to get some motion graphics earlier on, you know, when you can't hire someone or learn all the skills yet. So I thought that was really cool. And if you wanna go much deeper into learning AI, we've built a full course platform at Futurepedia with over 500 lessons across over 20 AI courses. You'll find full learning paths on ChatGPT, prompt engineering, automation, custom GPTs, video generation, coding with AI, and a lot more. It's all included in one subscription. You can get a seven day free trial using the link in the description or check out this video with an entire roadmap on how to learn AI. It goes deep.